Technical Availability. We're joined now by Brad Keselowski, driver of the number two Snap On Ford 1450. Uh, Brad, you've been with our team since you've been with Snap On for 37 years, 32 years. Uh, that's really, really impressive. But I um, want to get to talking about Tyler Durbin. You're the lineage active driver here for five victories. Um, you were 16th on the speed charts in final practice. What were you and Paul Wolf need to do for you to get uh, win number six in the Black Book 500? Yeah, well, it's uh, – can't break – can you hear me here? Just checking. Um, no, I think Talladega has been a good track for us uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, you, you, I come here excited and feeling like we can win. Um, and there's a lot to be said for that and kind of the confidence that you need to have to, to run well here. But uh, uh, also uh, we come here with, you know, pretty strong cars, uh, which, which always make your job uh, a little bit easier. But uh, – you know, I think this year the, it seems as though the cars are quite a bit different uh, than they've been, I, I think, in, in my history here. Um, you know, they're a lot faster um, and, and handling, you know, quite a bit worse. I told somebody today I felt like I was in 1985 with the way the cars are driving. So, um, you know, that said, uh, I expect a little bit of a different race than what we've seen here. And I'm not really sure exactly what to predict, but uh, we're, uh, we're hopeful it'll be a great day for us. Hey, Brad. Holly Kane back here in the midst. Oh, hey, Holly. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, NASCAR Wire Service. With five victories here, is there something to knowing how to race this? I mean, do you feel like this is a place where you can feel confident every time you come? Some people talk about it as it's a crapshoot. But clearly yeah. when you've won five times, that's not the case, perhaps. Well, maybe I've just been lucky five times. <laughs> You know, I, I think um, th there's a luck factor to tell Dega that will always be there. And there's a skill factor that seems to, to always be a moving target with different tactics and techniques based on uh, the rules, regulations, and, and competitors. Um, so, you know, what, what it took to win here the first time is certainly not what it's going to take to win here this weekend. Um, so you have to adapt to that. And uh, that's, that's a big challenge, right, uh, when you have something that you're successful with. and. Uh, I would say that with the way the cars are driving so far this weekend, it's going to take something even completely different again to, to be successful here. So I look at it as a, a fairly open weekend um, it, with a lot of unpredictability, even for Talladega standards. Um, and, um, you know, with that is an opportunity as well. But uh, we're certainly going to have to earn it. Caleb Whistler kicking the tires net. Brad, knowing your family's history in ARCA, kind of what was your initial thoughts whenever they announced that NASCAR has acquired ARCA? Yeah, I just read, uh, you know, a tiny bit about it, and I, I think there's an announcement actually after mine. Um, at least I saw it on the board out there that maybe will help give a little clarity because I, I don't know enough to really understand what's what's going on there. But uh, other than the basics, I think there's a lot of uh, details there that really will determine, you know, whether it was good for everybody. But um, you know, my initial reaction is, uh, you know, I really like Ron Drager and, and his family a lot. Uh, they've been really good family friends to to my family for, you know, decades. And um, I, I hope that he's he's happy and got has what he needs uh, and that everything worked out there. And I think that's probably my first thoughts uh, of just thinking about Ron and his family. Um, you know, beyond that, I, I hope that it, it turns into, you know, the, the kind of partnership that benefits you know all of motorsports for uh years to come so um yeah I, I don't know enough about the likelihood of that happening or, or where it's going or what's happening um you know i think there's a lot going on there uh but um i think those are my initial thoughts it's it's been almost 10 years since you got that first win here how did that change your life uh, you know, that was a huge, huge win for me, uh, Lee. You know, I think that first win put me in position to be with Penske. I don't know if I would have been with Penske without that, um, which was, you know, huge for me. Uh, it opened up a lot of doors, um, and I was able to get through them in, in a time period where, you know, they weren't kind of handing out quality rides like they were candy. <laughs> uh, you know, that's that's how that goes. But uh so it, it opened up a door for me to, to earn it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, to be here. And I don't know if I would be here if it wasn't for that first win. Come down front from Bob, and then we'll go to Mr. Minnick. 
Bob Parker, CSPN. Hey, Bob. Hey. Um, do you expect a restrictor plate change? Is it needed? And if they do change it, um, is it okay if you don't have practice? Yeah, I, I, I expect some fairly significant changes. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I, I definitely expect some significant changes. The cars are about uh, 5 to 10 mile an hour faster than they've ever been or they've been in here in the last two to three decades. Um, and, um, you know, the liftoff speed is, is probably a concern, uh, not just for, you know, me, but for everybody, right? Um, and with the cars handling the way they're handling, um, you know, you, you'll need the single file out to survive this race. And I think that's probably not the expectation uh, of what we want to put on for a show. So uh, I would expect there to be some changes for sure. As to what they might be, I, I don't know. Um, you know that, and, and as to whether it'll be success, whatever change is done will be successful. I don't know that either. Uh, but I would expect um, some kind of move to be made. Go back to the oh, Brad, if you had a like a magic wand, you could over here, over here. Hey, if you Rick. had like a magic wand, you could weigh. Where would you like to see Arca? like say two or three years now what role it should play in the grand scheme of things and also do you think it's a way for like nascar to reach out to like say the people that filled up the grandstands at salem last weekend i like arca just the way it is um you know it's uh each series is like a different flavor of ice cream and you know it, you know you can only have so many chocolates and so many vanillas you know sometimes they need to be a little different and arca's got its own flavor and i think that's great um i don't know if that's nascar's plan to keep it that i don't know I mean, I don't think anybody knows, right? Uh, maybe their plan is just to keep it the way it is right now, and I think that would be great. Um, maybe they got a bigger vision for it. Um, I, I don't know. That, that could be great, too. Um, so I guess we'll see. Was I on track when, when Jamie wrecked? Yeah, I saw it. I was uh, actually leading that group. And uh, you know, I saw him in my mirror, and I just saw him go up in the air and tumble a bunch of times. Uh, I didn't know exactly what caused it, but uh, certainly not what we want to see. And I'm glad Jamie's okay. Mike Embry, USA Today. Uh, his wreck, could the speeds be so high that the tires were under more stress? Could that have impacted his left rear or, or – Probably not a factor. Uh, I would say it could be a factor, but I, I don't know. It's, there's not a lot left to really decipher there. Um, but it, it certainly d is not a, a help. Um, you know, my understanding on the speed rating for those tires is that they're good for, you know, 220, 230 mile an hour. Um, and although we were, you know, the fastest we've been here in a number of years, I think we were that specific lap, I had, if I had to guess based on the data I saw, he'd. Jamie would have been around 210. Um, so I would say he had a 10 mile an hour margin, but I don't know. Um, maybe he just ran something over. That's There's a good likelihood of that. Usually when you have a flat rear tire, just by the very nature of how a vehicle with four wheels rolls down the racetrack, um, either something fell off the car or something failed. You didn't run over something because if you ran over something, it would have cut the front tire first because they're in the same path. Um, so it's possible, but I, I, I don't know. I, I'd hate to go on record as saying that speed is what causes tire to blow out. I, I don't know if we'll ever know that one. But he did run the fastest lap, the lap before that. So it, I could see where you could look at that and put a few question marks up. Bob Hockris, CSPN again. Uh, do, do you feel like is it too fast or are the cars just unstable with the no ride height rule? Um, you know, the too fast is, is subjective. Um, you know, we could run around here 260 and, you know, I'd be okay with that. Um, it probably would not be what you, a lot of people would expect when they buy a ticket <laughs> uh, because we'd be spread out across the whole track, kind of like, you know, it was in the mid 80s. Um, and I think a lot of people expect pack racing. Um, it's not too fast for me as a driver. This is what I signed up for, and I'm, I'm happy to go whatever speed. Um, it's too fast for those that expect to see pack racing on Sunday. Any additional questions for Brad? All right, Brad, well, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you.